All right, Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley went on The Breakfast Club uh, in an air today, and hmm, folks are calling this uh, her longest conversation on race. Host Charlemagne the God and DJ Envy um, hit her with a various variety of questions about immigration, racism, and the removal of the Confederate flag. Haley explained how growing up in a rural South Carolina town motivated her presidential run. I grew up in a small rural town. And we took care of each other. It was neighbors taking care of neighbors. And there was just something simple about it. And there was just something that was, that was good. You genuinely wanted to take care of people. Mm -hmm. And we've lost that. I mean, right now you see hatred, you see division, you see anger. I mean, you see these things stop. where they're trying- Stop, stop, stop. Oh my God, please stop. So let me explain to y'all what happens there. This is- the perfect example of the Republican Party. Long ago, we lived in simpler times. We lived in a time where everybody got along. Things were great. We weren't fighting each other. We weren't mad, we weren't upset. Nikki, your daddy couldn't get a job because he was Indian and was only hired at the HBCU. Yo mama, white folks wouldn't buy her dresses. Black women did. But do y'all see how she's trying to play this? Things now, we're just so, we're so divided. Um, if you ask most people, they're not fighting with their neighbors. What the hell is she talking about? But this is how they try to frame this thing. Oh, the world today is falling apart. If only we could go back to how it used to be. You mean like Jim Crow? I'm good. I'm good. I can bypass Jim Crow. Hit play. Undercut people and it's just, you know, it was exacerbated after COVID. But it's all the more reason why we need to go back and say, wait a minute. Stop taking all this so personally. This isn't personal. This is just about getting our country back on track. A swatting is personal, though. If I call somebody's oh. house, if I say, hey, this is going down at this house, that was personal. Well, I mean, it's personal from a political perspective. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what it's a blood sport to, to run for office these days. But yeah, I mean, that's it is. But it, it goes to show why. And it's why I'm so determined to finish this yeah. is because I know America's better than this. But do you lose the love for it, right? You, you just told us some of the reasons why you want to do this, right? And then you talk about some of the, the sides that are against that, right? You want to do it because you said you want to help people. You want to be the person that, you know, what you grew up on and what you wanted to see. But then you talk about them swatting your house, which is making your life miserable and your parents' life. Your parents could have had a heart attack, you mm -hmm. know? Then you talk about Donald Trump attacking you the way that he's attacking you. I mean, they dive into your personal life. They dive into an alleged affair. They dive into anything that you've ever done or allegedly have ever done into your life. And it's when does it get to the point you'd be like, excuse me, part of my friends, but fuck this. I don't want to do this anymore. Well, I mean, it's all lies. But what they don't realize is politics is the art of distraction. The more they do that, the more motivated I get. Because it's everything that's wrong with politics. Mm -hmm. It's everything that's wrong in this country that we have to clean up. So I do this. I'll take the pain. I'll take whatever it is. I'm a tough girl. I can handle it. Okay. This All right. Enough of that. I mean, that's just her just rambling. All right. So um, Charlamagne asked her about racism. Here's what she said politicians, Democrat and Republican, because we've all heard, we've heard you say America's never been a racist country. We've heard the vice president say that before. We've heard OG Jim Clyburn say that before. We've heard Tim Scott say that before. Why can't Democrats and Republicans just be honest and tell people, hey, we can't have honest conversations about racism in this country because it's not a good electoral strategy. I mean, that's not why. I'd do that's, it. that's why. No, that's why I, everybody does. It. I have talked about, look, I have talked about racism as it affected me and how we need to get past it. I mean, keep it. You, you can't talk about it and say America's never been a racist. You can't say America's never been a racist country, but then talk about the racism you experienced. There is racism in our country. Mm -hmm. I don't think that our country was founded to be racist. I don't. You don't create a constitution that says all men are created equal 
but that did not have women's rights in it. You, you don't create a country where women couldn't vote. You don't create a country that was set up for white male landowners. You don't create a country where black people were slaves, white people were indentured servants. You don't create a country where you have, go please go read the book Dark Bargain, where they talked about the battle over how do you include people of African descent who were slaves, and that's how they got to the three-fifth comp compromise because the South wanted to include them for population reasons, and the North didn't want to include them for population reasons. It came down to control or money. That was literally the creation of the country. The first slaves came here in 1619. So let's not act like a hundred years went by and oh my God, that was no racism here. How many Native Americans were slaughtered because white European settlers wanted the land? What the hell do you call that, Nikki Haley? Press play. I think that it was meant to be this amazing experiment to see if we could have freedom and democracy in a way that all men are created equal. But if you didn't we look at are all not men, there yet. But if you didn't look at all men as equal. Stop. Nikki, you act like people just, oh my goodness, we're just going to up and we're just going to pack up and just set sails for the United States of America. Mm. Mm -mm. It's not what happened. That's not what happened. In fact, um, there's a video uh, on social media where uh, anti-racist educator Tim Wise sort of talked about that. Uh, watch this. I'm just being honest. Like when Donald Trump says Mexico's not sending their best. Okay, you think England sent their best? <laughs> Like, like, <laughs> y'all like that. Look, the people, uh, people say, my family came over on the Mayflower. All right, shh. <laughs> Why are you bragging, Buttercup? That is not, I don't know who was on the Mayflower, but I know who wasn't, the king. The king was not on the Mayflower. Nobody the king wanted to keep around was on the Mayflower. But we have this fictional narrative. It's almost like we believe sometime around 1642, there was a British father somewhere in England that got his family together around the fireplace in the morning and said, all right, um, here's the thing. I know we're doing pretty well. We got this big castle, we got all this gold. I know it's brilliant, right? It's fantastic. We were at the King's Palace last week. Kids, you remember you played with his children out in the garden. Wasn't that great? Yeah, I know it was amazing, wasn't it? It was great. Listen, that's all fine and good, but daddy has an idea. My idea is as follows. Keep up, please. Keep up. Um, gather all your things. Not all of your things. We have a lot of things because we're doing really well. We're rich. We're powerful. Just gather up like a basket full of stuff and we are going to get on a big boat. And by that, I mean a rickety old ship. Like, I don't even know if it's seaworthy. Like, it might sink. We might drown, get eaten by sharks, get robbed by pirates, get scurvy, die a horrible, miserable death on the open ocean. However, and this is the important part, it will be an adventure. So what do you say? That didn't happen, right? The winners didn't get on the boat. The winners had no reason to leave. And you know what? There's no shame in that. There's no shame at all in having been the losers. In fact, let me tell you something. There's something quite... See, those are facts, but... What Nikki Haley is describing on The Breakfast Club is this fictional story that we have been sold. Oh, it was about freedom, which is no different than the story of Texas independence. Oh, the Alamo, they were fighting for freedom and equality. No, they were fighting to protect slavery because Mexico was outlawing it. And this is why they want to ban books. This is why they want to get rid of DEI. It's because they don't want the next generation of white kids to know the actual truth about this country. Press play. 
the ideology is flawed. But why do you want kids to hear that they live in a racist country? Why can't you tell kids, look, we're not perfect and we have some more things to fix? I just I don't want any child to think like that. I don't want any child to believe that they're disadvantaged from the second they're born. I didn't want to feel that. I don't think it's a disadvantage. I think if you tell it somebody, is, though. I think if you tell somebody it's cold outside, you just that just makes them put on a coat. No, it makes them it makes them know what it's going to feel like before they even get outside. I don't mm-hmm. want kids to feel that. I want them to get outside with confidence and strength and know that they can be anything. We have to do that. But they got to know the truth too. You yeah, know, they have to get the truth. The you truth. know, like I have two two black sons, and they have to understand what they're facing when they go out to this world. It's not going to be the same as. Let's say my neighbor or a classmate. It's going to be the same. And the, the same truth thing didn't with stop you. you. And yeah. same thing with you. If you, the you truth have did brothers, not stop you. and then let's say your brothers wore the same thing that your dad wore, they weren't going to have the same lifestyle, and they were going to be looked at differently than your other classmates. Look, it's the truth. There was a we miss Bamberg pageant that everybody would put their children in. It was the big thing in Bamberg. You always put your kids in. So my mom decided to put me and my sister in this pageant. And I was disqualified because they had a black queen and they had a white queen. And they said they didn't know where to put me because if I was in the black category, the blacks would be mad. If I was in the white category, the whites would be mad. So they gave me a beach ball and sent me on my way. Mm -hmm. A beach ball? Yeah, I know. That's all I got, right? (laughs) Only after my mom said, will you at least let her sing her song? You're never going to believe it. My song was, this land is your land. This land is my land. I mean, it doesn't get any worse (laughs) than that. Listen, did my parents sit down and say... To us, what happened here was wrong. Yes. Mm -hmm. But did they say this is the way the country is? No. My mom said, you get up, you show that this is we're going to make it better tomorrow. I just it's my mentality that I want everybody to know we all have a job to do, and that's to fix this country. And we never stop. See, this is why this is bullshit. So my parents told us why it happened. Oh, you mean the same parents who were told when they bought the home, uh, you can't invite any black people over. And when you sell your home, you must sell it back to the person you bought it from. See, this is the nonsense. And see, Nikki Haley has an advantage. Because Nikki Haley's advantage is that she's a light skinned Indian American. Nikki Hay don't look like Bobby Jindal. Now, Bobby Jindal, American Indian Republican, former governor of Louisiana, but Bobby Jindal dark skinned. So when Nikki was like, well, you know, we didn't really fit in the other category, oh, Nikki, you can pass for white. Yes, you can. You can pass for white. But see, you didn't fit in either category. Well, the black people would have been mad and the white people would have been mad. But Nikki, right there, it speaks about racism. And if you are a black parent, you are committing parental genocide if you do not tell your black children how they better act when they get stopped by the cops. See, Nikki's like, oh no, just things are gonna get better. I just want our kids, let's have them experience life. Are you crazy? If a black kid watches a white kid show their ass, when the cops pull him over, that black kid knows I cannot do what they just did. Cause the white kid is gonna go home. The black kid will go home too, likely in a body bag. This is called reality. See, If I'm sitting there asking her the question, okay, Nikki, explain to me then why black families today, grown people, have to take the black artwork and the black photos and the black books down when they get their houses appraised because the white appraiser may appraise it for less. So y'all see the game? I want y'all to listen. See how she said, well, I want to tell children. I'm not talking children right now. I want Nikki Haley to answer this. Nikki, what about the black woman with multiple degrees who applied for a job uh, with the Veterans Administration in Virginia 
eminently qualified, but when she left the interview, the white folks opted not to give her the job because they did not like her hairstyle. And she sued, and she won, and they had to pay her lost wages, but she had to sue in order to get that. It has nothing to do with her degrees. It was because of her hairstyle. See, Nikki don't want to talk about that. See, y'all, see, it's real simple to say, well, I just want kids to, to not have to, and we're going to get better, and things are going to get better. Nikki, who the hell you think you're talking to? Every damn black parent since 1619 has said that. The black existence is built upon, baby, tomorrow is going to be better. Black people, people of African descent were enslaved, not knowing when we were going to be free. 248 years until official slavery ended. And we still caught hell during Jim Crow. And then 92 years. So baby, ain't no, there's no group of people who has been more optimistic about the future of America than black people. 2009, survey was taken. The question was asked, are you optimistic about the future of America for your children? Who had the most optimism? Black people. Every minority group, majority of them were optimistic. Only one group in America was less than the majority, white people. September 2016, a survey was taken. The question was asked, are you optimistic about the future of America economically for the next 10 years? Black people, lowest wealth, highest optimism. Latinos, second lowest wealth, second highest optimism. White people, highest wealth, lowest optimism. Nikki, black people, we are always optimistic. We've always been America's glass is half full, even when America gave us a glass filled with mud and water. Press play. We have racism, and it's terrible. I've felt it, y'all felt it, a lot of people have felt it. But are we not going to fight every day to make sure that we stomp it out wherever we see it? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't want kids being raised to think that they're never going to get past okay, it. Okay, here we go, there we go. Again, she just repeating herself. Okay, play the next sound bite about the Civil War. In 2010, you also said about the Civil War, you said it here in the interview, too, that it was about tradition uh, versus change. And then they asked you about it earlier this year and you said it wasn't about slavery, but then you came back and said it was. Why, why initially didn't you just so say, the, hey, it was about slavery? So what the, happened there? So the context of that is I've done over 160 town halls, mm -hmm. answering every question, shaking every hand. We don't screen anything, all of that. When he asked that question, I made the mistake of thinking he was he was trying to ask something else. I could tell that he was not a fan. Mm -hmm. Slavery should have been the first thing that came out of my mouth. I mean, growing up in South Carolina, we all knew that the Civil War was about slavery. That almost seemed too easy. I thought he was asking a harder question. And that's why I didn't say it. It was wrong. I should have said it. I agree. You know, that... But it was just me overthinking that question. Did you feel stupid that night? Did you like, oh... Yeah, I mean, it was mm -hmm. one of those things, like... Because it was so like slavery is a given. Mm -hmm. So I was mad that it was a given, but I was too busy judging his intentions. Mm -hmm. Then I was just answering the question mm -hmm. and it was a mistake. Nimrata, did you actually say, I thought he was asking a harder question. So I decided to answer the hard question as opposed to answer the easy question that he was asking, do you actually believe that we gonna believe that lie? Girl, by last quote uh, comment I'm about to play y'all is probably the absolute dumbest and idiotic you've ever heard. Go. Kamala, I want to ask why you said if Kamala was president, why it would send chills down sure. your spine? Sure. So a couple of things. I think with Obama, that was, if you go back, that's when we really started to feel the division. That's when we were, it, it was, 
A the lot whole, of that was because of white supremacy, though. Well, no, I think it was it was everything. Everything was exaggerated with the Obama administration. It became more about gender. It became more about race. It became more about separating Americans instead of bringing them together. That was because of the right wing media, though. Well, they were they were scared to death of a black president. Look, I don't think everybody is at fault. I'm not saying that one person did this, but I'm saying under that administration, it really did cause some. You just felt people felt like they were being put in camps through that administration. The second thing is I saw he he was very much an Iranian sympathizer. He very much kept wanting to support and do things with Iran. I think that's incredibly dangerous. This is a a culture that says death to America. And you have to always be careful. A lot of spending happened on his watch that started us down that spiral. And then Obama did a lot of things by executive Mm-mm, order. Keep, keep playing, keep playing. And that really started the, he did a lot by executive order. Then Trump came in and reversed it all by executive order. Then Biden went and reversed it all there. You've got to do it the hard way. You've got to get Congress to come together and do those things because that makes it permanent. So what that did is that created leaders from around the world. saw so you just wait out a president. But more than that, People got used to just quick fixes instead of coming together and doing the hard work. So it was more about what do we need to do to move us forward in a way that we're lifting up everybody, not a select few. That's when I started to see it. Kamala, it's from an experience standpoint. That literally was two minutes and 34 seconds of absolute, undeniable trash. Again, oh, this, all this stuff started during Obama. That's where the division started. So we, we, we gonna forget Bush and Clinton and Bush and Reagan and Carter and Nixon and LBJ and Kennedy and Truman and FDR. We we, we, we gonna just rip, we go, we gonna we gonna forget Hoover and Wilson and Teddy Roosevelt. We we just gonna we just gonna forget like all that just didn't. We just gonna skip over the Tea Party, huh? Uh huh. We 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 just gonna skip over all of that. We we gonna skip over Fox News losing their shit because he wore a tan suit. We just gonna skip over all of that, and and, and I love this part right here uh, where she y'all know how she said well well no no everything and and everybody see when you don't want to call out your side see we we just gonna forget what Mitch McConnell said on the night of the inauguration we are going to do everything possible to make this man a one term president we, we we gonna forget all that huh. We're just going to conveniently s- skip over that, right? Is that what we're going to do? And then, oh, 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 my goodness, oh, my goodness. You know, he, he sits here and he, you know, he, 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 he does all of, all of these things. And he just, you know, uh, it's like he, uh, uh, you know, he, 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 he uses you know, executive orders. It's in the Constitution. The Constitution says a president can pardon anybody he wants to. For federal crime. It's in the Constitution. He doesn't have to. He literally does not have to give a reason. It's in the Constitution. Executive orders are in the Constitution. So Nikki Haley is saying Obama was wrong for using executive orders. I'm sorry. Why did he use executive orders? Oh, yeah. It's because... Republicans in Congress wouldn't cooperate. But she wants to conveniently skip over all of the... Y'all, the Republican Party was so trash and so crazy that their own Speaker of the House said, I'm sick of y'all asses, I'm out. He went back to Ohio to drink and smoke and cut his own grass because he said, y'all are crazy. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm the only one who remembers those eight years. 
Rebecca, your thoughts. Oh, I've been waiting. Look, Roman, <laughs> you, you said a mouthful, but there is, a, I just want to point out, there is a difference between black targeted media, like the breakfast club versus black owned media, like Roland Martin unfiltered. And the reason why I say that is that when you have someone who's running for president and especially when they're talking about issues of race, there has to be an immediate fact check and context that's provided while that person is allowed for minutes on end just to spew nonsense, that's not factually correct. Even talking about children and what can what is age appropriate to teach about race with school children, it's there's very age appropriate w- ways to discuss race in this country and try to get white children to identify with the good people in history, the abolitionists in history, um, those who fought for civil rights and who fought to end Jim Crow. There were white people who fought to end those things. So in the context of teaching about racism in this country, then you should want white sh- school children now to identify with those folks who said discrimination is wrong in this country. But even taking another step back, Nikki Haley graduated high school from a segregationist academy. (laughs) Not only was it a segregationist academy, it was a merger in the 80s. It was a merger of two segregationist academies that merged together to spawn a super segregationist academy. And let me tell you how bad um, the the, the two academies were that that then uh, merged into, I think it was called Orangeburg Preparatory. The previous name of one of those academies was named after the largest slaver in the entire South, not the largest slaver, um, the white man who had the most slaves in South Carolina, but the white man who had the most slaves across the South period. That lets you know what that school was thinking about when it was formed. It was specifically to remind black people, especially in South Carolina, to stay in their place. But something else, take you know, taking a step back and thinking about the history, especially of Asian Americans in the South and their reaction to Jim Crow. I think it's important um, to point to the. I think it's the uh, Lum v. Rice case out of Mississippi. This was about four decades before. Actually, it might have been three decades before Brown versus the Board of Education. And so it was an Asian American family that decided that they wanted to integrate um, whites only schools. Um, I think this case was out of Mississippi, but specifically, they didn't want to integrate whites only schools um, for all people of color or for also the black kids, they wanted their kids to be declared white so they could go to the whites only school and not be forced to go to the blacks only school. So I think what's really interesting is where historical context matters. Because remember, Nikki Haley's family immigrated from Canada. First, they were in India. They moved to Canada in 1964. Then in 1969, they moved to South Carolina. And we all here, this audience has heard the story that if it wasn't for black folks, Nikki's family would not have survived in America because it was black folks who employed Nikki's father working at the local HBCU, making sure he had food on his table because white schools would not employ him. Um, his wife also had uh, was very well educated, but could barely get a job. And so she ended up, ha- uh, end up um, um, having a clothing store and her clientele was largely white. And so as Nikki is reframing this revisionist history. No, of, no, oh, no, well, no, 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 Largely black. Black. Yes. Yeah. That, sorry if I made the mistake and said the, uh, the client's health was other than black. My point here is, is that black people clothed and fed Nikki Haley and her family in America. And the reason why black folks clothed and fed her family is because white society um, would not allow them um, into society. So now for Nikki to cling to this white supremacy revisionist history of, of, uh, of America, not only is it disheartening, but it's also gaslighting because the Republican Party through Nikki Haley is using her non-white face to push its white supremacy agenda. And we do have to call that out. But this is also why black owned media matters. Robert. Uh, You know, I'm going to run for prime minister of India. Uh, against Modi. I think his term is up in 26. I'm going to make the argument that the British Empire wasn't racist. 
that the Raj, the entire period of British colonial rule over India, that was completely race neutral, that the partition of India in uh, uh, 1947, completely non-racist, that Gandhi was just tripping when he was protesting against the Indian, uh, the British Empire, and that they should have no complaints about the conditions of Indians in the subcontinent today. And the, and the Queen has every right to parade around with all the crown jewels of Delhi uh, in her, uh, or the King now, in his scepter and his crown. Because clearly, you know, there's a race-neutral society there. There's no reason for them to be upset. That's exactly how ignorant Nikki Haley's statement sound. Because anybody would say, objectively, the British Empire won the one, one of the most racist empires in American history, and clearly the American Empire was built on the bones of dead Indians. Literally, that's where the, we, we kept the names of the, the Indian names of cities and then just killed all the people who were there. The cornerstone of the White House was laid by the enslaved Americans. She was the, uh, the governor of a state that fired the first shots of the U.S. Civil War. And the fact is that it's this gaslighting of white America, this revision of history that they've created that says that everything was fine up until we had that black president who started dividing us. Do you know that there were 1,700 members of Congress that owned slaves? The last slave-owning member of Congress only left Congress in 1922. A hundred years ago, uh, I'm sorry, our founding fathers, George Washington, owned over 600 human beings. And you mean to tell me that that wasn't a racist person who walked out to look at his plantations full of slaves every day? Every day? Uh, if you're looking at Jefferson and Washington combined, their plantations were larger than the state of Virginia is today. So let's just say from the beginning, the entire conceptualization around America was that it was going to be a haven for slave owners. When you talk about manifest destiny, we now say that it was Jefferson's view of America was to be a nation of uh, small farms from sea to shining sea. It was not. It was to be a nation of plantations from sea to shining sea. You see how they changed the wording in there? Because he said that we were meant to be a nation of plantations. People know exactly what, uh, what we were getting at. We fought a civil war where more Americans died in that war than all other wars combined. Why? To make sure that the South could keep their enslaved Africans. But we will still just somehow try to contort ourselves into this view that there is nothing uh, nothing innately wrong with America, that there is nothing built into our uh, built into the bones of this country that talks about racism and segregation. Even Condoleezza Rice said the birth defect of America was racism and segregation. That's Condoleezza Rice, the Republican Condoleezza Rice. And African Americans have only had rights in this country ostensibly since the 1960s. But you mean to tell me that in the 60 years since then, somehow we have forgotten everything that has taken place. This is why we have these Republicans attacks on public education. This is why they're burning books. This is why they're against Black Lives Matter. This is why they are rewriting Dr. King and turned him. Uh, I, I, I've argued on my show last week that they've made up their own version of Martin Luther King. I call him MLK. And he doesn't talk about racism. He doesn't talk about segregation. He doesn't talk about reparations. The only thing he wants us to do is have this race neutral society because the only part of his speech they heard was the content of our character, not the color of our skin. And there's a reason that Nikki Haley goes on outlets like The Breakfast Club, where you have a real estate scammer and so on accused of sexual assault, asking her questions as opposed to places where you're going to have journalists, uh, 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 attorneys, uh, 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 et cetera, uh, actually, talking about these things. Uh, actually, fact check. First of all, Envy uh, has not been accused of a real estate scam. His partner uh, has been indicted, not DJ Envy. That's a fact check. Okay, fine. Somebody whose partner was accused of real estate scamming. But I would love to see her sit down with some academics. I would love to see her sit down with people who have worked in the field for their entire lives of social justice. I would like to see her talk to the people who have been uh, who have been killed, who have had family members killed, who have been victims of a racist society, and argue to them that the entirety of these things were made up in their minds, and all we need is a can-do attitude, and things will be better. If Nikki Haley, if, if they simply, as Rebecca said, change that one ruling and said that Indian Americans had to identify as black instead of white on the census, Nikki Haley's ent entire life would be different today. She knows that. And the fact that we are, or we are having these arguments in 2024 shows you that America has not gone as far as they have. I'd like to mention the entire time she's making these arguments, Donald Trump is saying incredibly racist stuff about her. Her name is Nimrata, and Donald Trump is calling her Nimrod because he claims that she's stupid. He said that Vivek Ramaswamy is going to go back to running the 7-Eleven. 
That is something that Donald Trump said. He said that Nikki Haley's dresses weren't so fancy because her mother, of course, ran a dress shop. So when you're in, you're looking in the face of racism, and you're saying that I can't even talk about, it, I don't have the spine, the bat, but backbone to stand up to it. That tells me you don't have what it takes to ever be president. John Quell. For me, um, you know, one, it's it's interesting um, that it has the appearance of trying to wipe out our identities um, as African-Americans, right? You want to take out portions of history that don't fit the reflection that you, um, Nikki Haley, wanted to reflect, right? They want to take out African-American history. Um, they, she, she discussed about how parents shouldn't talk to their children about uh, uh, racial tensions or relations. Um, and essentially, you know, they're attacking our DEI and affirmative action is gone. And it's literally, they want to erase the history to reflect what they want history to be, right? And want us to think that that race is still not an issue here, right? Um, and frankly, with the Breakfast Club, she knew exactly what she was doing going on that show. I mean, the following the the young black voters that watched that show, she knew exactly what she was doing with going on that show because she wanted to reach voters. Um, my issue with her being on The Breakfast Club is with the host that they did not challenge her with that dangerous rhetoric that she was spewing to the millions and millions of viewers that listen and watch that show. And, and, and that's that's a bigger problem, right? Charlemagne the God has made it very clear that he is not a fan of Kamala Harris, and she has been on the show several times. And he has been quite rude and on, on, on some occasions where he didn't even speak to her in the same manner that he's speaking to Nikki Haley, which is also a, another interesting point for another day. However, um, it's one thing for you to not support the Biden administration. However, um, allowing um, someone from the opposite party to come on, um, spewing that we don't have any, that this is not a, a systemic racial country, is absolutely Oh, looks like uh, we lost uh, we lost John Quell's uh, signal there, folks. Look, here's my whole deal. Um, Nikki said a whole bunch of BS, and she was spinning, she was backpedaling, and she was just saying stuff. She was talking the side of her neck, and the reality is, she's not going to say the truth. Charlamagne asked the question: Why can't politicians be honest? Because they can't. Because Americans can't handle the truth. Especially white Americans can't handle the truth. They can't. That's why they got to soft shoe it. That's why you got to dance around it. That's why Obama had to have a beer summit when he said the cops acted stupidly after, after arresting Skip Gates when it was ascertained that he lived there. That's what he said. No, they said, oh, he called the cops stupid. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. But Fox News lost their mind and he had to have a beer summit. That right there is America. And so you, 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 you're not going to have a black politician speak hardcore truth about the history of this country because they're not going to be able to garner non-black votes. It's a fact. It, so, so we all know when Vice President Kamala Harris answered the question, we knew why she couldn't say the real deal. Because white America has never been able to handle the truth about this country. There was a certain person who actually said, wrote, a, wrote in a book that he believed that white America was incapable of properly dealing with the issue of race and their role in it. Who was that person? Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. In his book, Where Do We Go From Here, Chaos or Community? He literally said it. So, Nikki can sit here and dance and whatever, but we know truth is truth. And all that running her mouth mean nothing.